Hey guys, so I'm Sam, which is a title that is probably under here. And I'm Emily. And we've been talking about doing a video, a collaboration video about MP3s, and realized that we would actually both be at VidCon, where we are right VidCon! now. VidCon! There's so many teens screaming down there. It's uh, a little overwhelming. Yeah, so this is uh, us introducing my video, uh, but there'll be an annotation here, and then again at the end to go watch Emily's video. Go watch my video! And uh, subscribe to Blink Pop Shift, and also subscribe to This Exists, and now enjoy my video. When it comes to portable music players and formats, you may think we've reached the end of the line. We're good. But did people think that in 1985? First there was the transistor radio, then the headphones. Now there's Music Vest. Being able to bring your music wherever you go has been the dream since the first phonograph cylinder was cranked out in 1877. Truly portable music began with the Regency TR1 transistor radio in 1954. Further compactness has been accomplished through the speakers that go into these tiny sets, speakers which meet the space limitations and yet are as efficient and distortion free as though several times their size. Sony launched the Walkman in 1979, giving you a choice of what music you would actually trudge along to. Technically, they were beat to the punch by the Stereo Belt in 1972, but the Stereo Belt was never actually manufactured or commercially available. And if you're my age, you grew up always carrying around a backpack with a binder full of CDs in it, and you brought that everywhere you went, all the time, just in case someone needed you to put on every no effects song ever recorded. Beatles there. Uh, more Beatles. <laughs> the MP3 format obviously decimated the backpack and CD binder industry. It became the standard for compressed music files and along with the iPod still dominates the portable music market. I'm having a hard time getting my head around the fact that you can transfer an album onto this in 10 seconds. There have been challengers along the way. The latest to grab headlines was Neil Young's Pono, which raised over $6 million via Kickstarter. Canadian rocker Neil Young is hoping a new device will be music to your ears. Pono promises better than CD quality sound, but many record labels only have CD masters of their back catalog archives. And if they do have a lossless master, most people can't really hear the difference. You'd be just as well off in a vest. Music Vest is designed to provide you with high quality stereo music wherever you go, whatever the weather. With Music Vest's waterproof speaker system, you can enjoy your favorite music whether you're exercising, riding, golfing, fishing, or just hanging around. Sounds like a steal at $34.95. It's hard to imagine why the Music Vest is not the portable music standard of our day. Another near miss? Hit clips. Hit it! Coming at you right between the ears is Hit Clips Music. To get you grooving. Hit Clips is a slick micro audio system. This type package is small, but pumps out monster sound. It breaks down like this. We clip, 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 and sample songs so only the grooves stick. It's gonna be me. Hit Clips played one minute mono clips of popular songs that were technically digital but used Delta Sigma modulation to output a sound like this. Part of the appeal of hit clips was that they were affordable. The players were like four or five bucks, the songs were Happy Meal toys. This was not the player for you if you wanted to show off. If you want to show off, you gotta drop some bills. David, T64 brillantes. 63 brillantes. Y una guamarina, aquí. The Trek Store iBeat Organics Gold MP3 player currently sells for $20,000, making it the most expensive MP3 player on the market that isn't just an iPod with diamonds glued onto it, which is a thing for some reason. If you're among the nerd horde who hate the compressed sound of MP3s, you've probably already graduated to using AAC compression. But if that's not good enough, there is hope beyond the hype of Pono. There's WIMP, a Spotify-style streaming service that offers lossless streaming. And another crowd-funded portable music player, Geekwave from Light Harmonic, promises pretty decent sound that might be better than the Pono. Still, I wish it was a vest. The only fashion and personal sound systems currently sweeping the country. What do you think? Are you happy with your iPod, or do you think that there's room for improvement in the portable music arena? 
Let us know what you think in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of This Exists every week. Stay Vesty. Thanks for watching This Exists. Come watch me on Blink Pop Shift and we're gonna talk all about compression algorithms and how MP3 algorithms drove the culture of sharing on the internet. I really love Emily's channel and I emailed her to be like, <laughs> we should do a video together. Uh, I do this thing about music and, and I, there's a lot of interesting stuff between music and technology, obviously. And you were like, that would be great but I don't know anything about music. One time in college, someone showed me a video of a record player. And, and I thought it was a CD. And I was like, wow, how did you get that CD to turn like that? And everyone just stared at me like I was an idiot. Yes, so uh, definitely go watch her channel. Maybe she'll learn something about music. <laughs> Last week, we talked about weird, offensive hacks for Super Mario Brothers and asked if you thought they were art or if you had any particularly offensive favorites. Several of you, including EW275X and Havocado, took issue not only with the question at the end of this episode about whether or not offensive ROMs are art, but video games themselves actually being art. Now I know that this is a debate that is raging inside of the video game community, and we didn't really give it a lot of credence. In my defense, I tried to say video games are art inside of scare quotes in my mind, but I don't know if that translated, and that is in and of itself a very interesting conversation. General Potato Salad made the point that not only were early Nintendo hacks all super offensive, but so were 8-bit PC hacks. Uh, he particularly mentions uh, Barbarian 2 Porno, which just takes all of the clothes off of the players in the Commodore 64 version of Barbarian 2, which is not unlike a favorite of mine that we did not include in that episode, Kung Fu, which is a hack of Kung Fu, the Nintendo game, with just all the players uh, naked. So clearly a lot of class, a lot of class back in the day. Adam Jacobs attempted to weigh into the legal ramifications of these sorts of remixes or mashups, uh, talking a lot about fair use and parody and satire, things that I don't totally understand and which he obviously seems to feel fall under a general gray area of the law. Pretty interesting stuff if you're interested in suing whoever made the Dick Nazis hack. Daniel Tittyfish pointed out that Naked Headless Mario vs. the Dick Nazis is the best band name he's heard in a long time, also allowing me to use the phrase Daniel Tittyfish thinks Naked Headless Mario versus the Dick Nazis in my job. So thank you, Daniel Tittyfish. Brendan C. brought up the Super Mario Brothers 256 Worlds hack, which is not strictly speaking a hack in the way that we were talking about, but is apparently a way of accessing 256 glitch levels in Super Mario where you originally, you put in tennis and then you don't turn off the system, but you take out tennis and then you put in Mario and somehow you can play almost 300 new levels of Mario. As for this week's book recommendation or book pairing, Jonathan Stern's MP3 Meaning of a Format covers the entire history of compression from transistor radios up until the invention and implementation of the MP3 format. It's a fascinating look at science and psychoacoustics and the nature of music and, and how science affects our day-to-day -day lives when we're just listening to a Lord record. So absolutely worth checking out Jonathan Stern's MP3 Meaning of a Format.